It's the Morning Marketing Machine, here to grow your e-commerce business with proven marketing strategies and tactics, so you can run your business with machine-like precision. My name is Douglas Levin, let's dive in. So hello everyone, and welcome to Morning Marketing Machine. I'm very happy today because one of my favorite people is here. Uh, so um, we, Barbara Boshin, uh, she left the corporate world, um, become a full-time entrepreneur, can't speak. Um, pretty much anyone that's been around Amazon for more than five minutes has probably heard of her. Um, so she, she established a successful online selling business. Uh, she was determined to branch out, help others. Uh, so she's a co-founder of Comerchant. Um, which offers a variety of so uh, software services, including EasyKey. Um, and she's got over 20 years of business background in finance, e-commerce, product management. She pretty much does everything, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, so I wanted to welcome Barbara to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. It's great yeah, to be yeah. here. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to have you on. And uh, and for people that, that haven't really kind of either heard of you or heard your story, I know, obviously, we, we've talked a bunch, but I'm I, I don't think I've actually heard like how you got started in, in terms of getting on Amazon selling e-commerce. Oh, it was an act of total desperation. So it, it was, um, I had worked in corporate America for a number of years and, you know, I say like it's, it's not me, it's you, or it's not you, it's me kind of saying, well, it was both of us. I was a really hard worker and corporate America said, oh, good. And we'll use you mercilessly um, to, to do, you know, I was working 80 hours a week. Um, wasn't unreal for them to come and say tomorrow. Oh, by the way, tomorrow you're flying to Denver for a week. I'm like, really? I have children. I have, you know, I work in corporate for a reason. I'm not a salesperson, whatever. Um, but that's, you know, it just was kind of getting crazy. And no matter what job I took or where I took it, as long as I was in corporate America, um, you know, I'll take responsibility that some of it was me. But to a large, not setting boundaries and not doing all those things. But when I would try, they would just kind of look at me strangely like, that's not a team player attitude. And so long story short, it was my birthday. It was a Sunday night. I was at work. And the only weird thing um, was that um, I was late at night, which was not unusual. But other people were there with me. And I'm like, it's Sunday. It's my birthday. I'm at work and I'm fully expecting to come, be back here tomorrow at 6 a.m. This is wrong. This is just like, this is just wrong. Um, so I try to figure out, I, you know, we, we, we live in New Jersey, so it's not like I can just quit my job and raise chickens or something, which um, my husband won't ever let me do, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> he keeps saying, like, how are we going to travel with chickens? I'm like, I like chickens. Um, but anyway, so the, the reality was there wasn't really a way just to drop out um, or to even sideline. Like I knew that if I said, hey, I'm going to drop, I'm going to take a lower position. I'm going to, you know, get out of management. They would say, fine, you can, you know, you can work part time, which just meant I worked 80 hours and didn't get paid for, you know, 40, you know, 20 of them or whatever. So that wasn't going to happen. We looked at Dunkin' Donuts. And then one day. I see on Amazon, sell yours. And I was like, sell my what? I have nothing to sell. What does this mean? And I was intrigued. And I looked at it a little closer. I looked at it a little closer. And I realized that I could sell my kids' toys. I could sell things that I found at a garage sale. I could sell things around the house. And I'm like, all right, all right, where can this go? And again, not to drag it out, but over time, we did garage sales and used stuff, you know, $100 million budgets by day and cleaning stuffed animals by night, um, which was kind of comical. And uh, every once in a while, you'd hear these like eight foot story bins just falling over full of Barneys and um, all these, these uh, stuffed animals. And they were great. And they had great margin. And, um, but it wasn't scalable. Um, it got me to a certain point. But I was like, then I discovered retail arbitrage. And I was like, now this is something. And how, what can I do with this? At one point, I think I had 15 people shopping for me in um, the tri-state area. And that was really, really good. And at one point, it became very viable. I said, I can make my, I can replace my income, which was all I was really looking for is to have. I didn't, it wasn't working less. It was just being more flexible. If I wanted to take the day off, I could take the day off. You know, we're not open today. I'm the boss, whatever. Um, you know, we're going to the beach. Um, not that that happens that much, but I wanted that flexibility. I didn't want to be going to Denver tomorrow. So I knew I was going to get laid off. Um, and I was like, yes. Will there be severance? Yes. Will there be vacation payout? Yes. Okay, I'm good. 
Um, and that's how I went full time. I, you know, I had all the groundwork laid, I did all the math and I knew that um, we were good for a year. So if I couldn't make, if I couldn't scale it, you know, the rest of the way for a year, then, you know, I'll just go back to work. That was my game plan. I'll just go back to the corporate America and say, hey, I tried it, you know, whatever. But it actually did work really well. We got a, we got a warehouse, a small warehouse we're about to go to, which I've managed to eke out for six years. We outgrew it four years ago, but it's like, no, no, you can put this on top of that and put that under my desk and we'll get a storage unit. But we're finally moving, tripling our size. So that's huge. Still not a huge warehouse, but just give us a little breathing room. So um, I think anybody can, I think you need a few skills um, to be doing this job. You need to be fairly decent at math. Um, I, I have a feeling based on some of the race to the bottoms, not too many people are good at, at math. Um, <laughs> and you need to be very observant um, and be able to see the opportunities. And somebody's like, well, how, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you know, when someone says to you, would you buy a thousand of the, oh, I can't buy a thousand, but, but could you buy a thousand? Like, what could you do with a thousand? How can you make a thousand at a really good price or a really good opportunity or a really good space work for you? Um, and it may not be where you start. But it's just seeing those things when you go into the retail arbitrage, say in Walmart, and stuff doesn't scan. Well, do you just leave it there or do after a while you start looking at it and going, hey, nobody's selling that. I could sell that. I could make a listing for that with that UPC and, and I found an opportunity. So thinking outside the box and being very observant, I think are really, really key. And the math, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's something that I think a lot of people when they're getting started, they, they don't think about those kinds of things. They're like, oh, like it's usually what the path of least resist, resistance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well, I have to put in some work. Forget it. I'm going to go on to the next thing. Yeah, I know. I tried to tell, teach people in the beginning. I said, I'll teach you. This is amazing. This will be your ticket to freedom. And I would drive me crazy because very few, I, I offered to show people the ropes. I was like, listen, here's what you do. You go watch all the stuff on Amazon Seller University, ask me any questions, and they'd start doing it. They realized it was actually work. <laughs> they didn't realize that you had to put things in boxes and take stickers off and bag things and learn this and do that and pay attention. It's like if it were fun, it would be called vacation. You know, this is if you want to make an income at this, you're going to have like, I don't think, I don't believe anyone who says Amazon is super easy and like, oh, it's so, you know, it's like, it's just like a job like anything else. If you're just doing it as a hobby, yeah, it's super easy. But if you want to make it scale and you want to pay the bills, it's it's work. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and that's the whole thing. Like, uh, as I assume you've learned and I've learned and, and everybody who's been in business for more than five seconds, there's always going to be obstacles, right? right? As you go through it, um, it's how you deal with them that ultimately mm -hmm. like, uh, affects how, how much you're able to grow and how much your business is able right, to Right, right. Yeah. So, so um, obviously, uh, since you've been able to be successful at it, you kind of also come up with your own um, product as well. So uh, you can tell us a little bit more about EasyKey as well. Oh, so we, so, all right. So it's not all um, uh, flowers and, and perfume. So after I had 15 sellers, I got suspended on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and people have heard me tell this story before, but if there's anything that feels like a gut punch, it's that little red flag and we're reviewing your selling account. But back in the day, they didn't review your selling account. You had no warning. Nobody called you with a 72 hour notice. Nobody, there weren't any, all you could see was you had a hundred percent perfect feedback and everything looked great because you couldn't see anything behind the scenes. Like, well, what do you mean I'm suspended? What did I do? Oh, you're selling counterfeit soap. I'm like, you mean the case where somebody thought it was what? You know, <laughs> and it's, of course I wasn't. I had bought it at TJ Maxx and I was reselling it, but someone thought it was inauthentic. And back in the day, you know, I can say that since I've been selling on Amazon since 2009, I think we got, I tried to whack, walk it out of my brain, but I believe it was 2015 where we got suspended. Um, it's only five years ago, but it still it was huge. And I literally... It was on the floor in the warehouse, just laying there for going, what have I done to my family? We have no other income. Well, we have my husband's income, but you know, we have no income to replace my income. And, um, you know, and I was the finance person and he was the art person. He was a graphic designer. So it, it was sketchy. And, um, I, and so I was doing that. I didn't know what I did wrong. I couldn't, it was just such a shocker. 
Um, but it resulted in me, you know, I'll say I, I licked my wounds for a day or two. And then I got out, uh, Cynthia Stein helped me get reinstated, which was huge. And she basically said, don't think about this anymore. I got this. I'm going to take this over here. Of course, I, of course, I did think about it, but I focused on what I could do. So for the first time, I had time because it, was, it wasn't the, you know, everybody always says, I wish time would stop so I could get caught up. It's like, it's not quite the way you want it to be done, but it was huge because it made me look at everything I was doing. And I've always been one to take personal responsibility. And I said, how did I mess this up? What did I do wrong and what can I do better? Well, first off, the first thing I did wrong was I didn't understand and I wasn't engaged in the Amazon world with Facebook and all the different things in the forums and that needed to change. I need to be very involved in that and be on top of what Amazon's looking for, what's going on behind the scenes so I don't get suspended again. What else do I need to do? What else did I not? I didn't take responsibility because this is my only income. I'm sitting here, la, 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 15 sellers, la, 15 shoppers, la, la, la. I need to be responsible for some diversification. And interestingly enough, a business partner, um, my business partner, Brian, both of, he and I worked at Corporate America uh, as well. And he was in the office next to me. And he would see me go out at lunchtime and come back with a car full of Walmart bags and TJ Maxx bags and He's like, doesn't your husband, so I don't mean to be sexist because it might sound that way, but does your husband, like, I think my wife would get really mad if I shopped every day like you do. And, you know, I explained to him it was ski, you know, this is for the ski trip. This is for the beach house. This is, you know, someday tuition for the kids. And it's like, oh, so he started doing it too. And I think I was full time when I got laid off for two years. He was only full time for one year and he got suspended at the exact same time. And he was my backup plan. So it's not like I didn't have a backup plan. Like if I get suspended, I can sell on his account and vice versa. Oh, we're both suspended. And it was just Amazon had changed the algorithm basically. And what in the past was okay now wasn't anymore. And thousands of people were laid off, were laid off, were suspended. Mm -hmm. So we started talking and we're thinking, all right, we need diversification. What can we do? Well, his back, I said, you know, there's a lot of seller tools that aren't available. We need to, first and foremost, we need to be on another platform because just being on Amazon is so limiting. So we started building software called Co-Merchant um, that helped you get relisted on the jet. Um, at the time, there wasn't very many of these relisting services. They were very, very expensive, the few that were around. Uh, so we built for jet. And then about a year later, we built for Walmart. Um, and a year after that, we were going to begin to build for eBay. And they were changing the way they were going to do things. So we decided to put that on hold. And we built another software product called EasyKey, which is automated keywording for Amazon. Um, and we can talk more about that later, but the reason that exists, again, is a strategic advantage that I found from my selling business. It's like, again, back to that observant, like if you look at what you're doing and you think, oh, how would that work over here? And how could that work over there? You can really start to leverage some things. So we would do retail arbitrage. And then as we got a little bit more um, grown up in our business, we were doing wholesale. And then a little bit more grown up, we're doing private label and building our own products. And when you have a thousand units of something, it's a way, it's amazing the way your perspective changes. You're like, oh, I only, when you're doing arbitrage or wholesale, like, oh, I only have 10 of those things. Who cares if it fails? But if you've got a thousand of something, you're like, this thing has to go. That's a lot of money to throw away if it doesn't work. And you learn all these things like how to optimize, how to do advertising, how to cross list, all these different things. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be huge if I could do that with my wholesale listings and my retail arbitrage listings? And I tried, but it was so time consuming. And again, while I had a thousand private label to do that kind of energy and work on 10 wholesale or two retail arb seemed crazy. Um, but every time I did do it, things would sell. So basically, you know, again, try to keep it a little concise. We don't do that well. Um, <laughs> is to, we basically took the same process that we undertook manually in doing a private label and applied that process to wholesale and retail arbitrage programmatically. So we basically go out and look at your listing, look at all your competitors' listings and grab all the keywords that are on the competitors' listings and say, did you miss any of these? For example, I always use this one. We sell shower gel. It's an English product, and they don't call it body wash. They call it shower gel. Well, because it was wholesale, we couldn't change anything without opening 10 cases, and then maybe some things, oh, you got to talk to the brand owner, all these different things. 
but we could change the back end keywords and just changing or just adding the word body wash in the back end keywords took our listings from maybe 10,000 um, searches uh, to quarter of a million searches. Because body wash in the United States is so much more searched. And that meant that that product is now getting a lot more visibility. So that was something that we did to be diversified to make sure that we have, you know, we do account management for other uh, uh, Amazon sellers, um, mostly just, you know, corporations or manufacturers. We have our selling accounts and then we have the software company. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's one thing, it's taking responsibility that getting that suspended really, I'm knocking on wood here, really um, made us think about like, how are we gonna do things? How are you gonna plan for things? And I'll tell you, it made, makes me, that whole process and that whole thought process, I have like a little motto, I call it 10% today for tomorrow. So I'm always looking at a new marketplace or I'm always looking at a new product or a new vendor. I'm always trying to grow and never sitting on what we're doing well because it can evaporate. Coronavirus, it was like being suspended all over again for a couple of days. And I had my I had my signature meltdown for like a day or two. I'm like, not only am I get I'm not gonna sell anything on Amazon, I'm gonna die too. This is terrible. You know, how am I gonna solve for that? You know, when you're ADD, you, you you can't handle that many changes. You gotta take them one at a time. But um, then again, I had my two days of you know, maybe flailing a little bit, and I was like, all right, what are, how are we gonna address this? What are we gonna do? We can't send anything into Amazon anymore. Fine, buy everything we have again, and we're gonna merchant fulfill. Mm -hmm. If they're not gonna replant and they're not gonna ship for three weeks, every vendor we have, let's buy everything that we already have in there. They're not shipping, and we'll merchant fulfill. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know what? Let's add gift wrap onto that. Maybe someone will we'll get a little bit more more margin on that too. So we were fulfilling our butts off for the month, the month of is most of all of April and May and most and some of March, you know, and then FBA started coming back in and we could tape, taper it down again. But yeah, that was, you know, talk about mindset. You're allowed, it's okay to have a tantrum, but then get up off the floor and fix it because yeah, it's not, it's not solid way to operate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what I love about you were just talking about too was, um, the idea that uh, I, like I've always talked about the idea of, of all products are is just a way to solve a problem. And, and that that's all you're ever trying to do whenever you're coming up with something. And, and there in terms of like easy key um, and, and what, okay, you, what you said with co-merchant, I mean, all you're doing at that point is you, you identified a problem that, that mm -hmm. a lot of people are having and you're giving them a solution to it, which is all we're ever trying to do. Like that's as, all we're trying to do. Yeah. Whatever your product is, you're just trying to show whomever your customer is that this will solve it for them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I, I love that. And, and, and one of the things that you were talking about a little bit earlier too, and this is one of the things I kind of want to go back to as well is um, you, you said a couple of times how you had, you had your meltdown and then you were able to kind of get over it. Um, so this kind of gets back to the idea that I know I've dealt with, I know a lot of people do. It's sort of like, like that, that, no matter where it is that you're at in your business, there's always going to be obstacles that you're, you're dealing with. Um, whether it, it's uh, something you just can't get past uh, for whatever reason, or it's your own mindset or like you're in a funk because I mean, we do what we do. I was like, like you were saying, what's great is you're the person in charge. You can take a day off, but also you're the person in charge. So you so, don't get paid if you don't work. Right. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. a sense. So, so, so I guess one of my questions then is like, all right, so when you've been either in that funk or you're trying to get like, over, overcome an obstacle, obstacle, like what have you tried um, and what ultimately has worked for you to kind of get past that? Well, I'm, I, you know, I've said it's, you need to be really good at math and you need to be very observant. But a thing I didn't mention was being analytical. So like I said that, you know, I took, take ownership of it. Um, you know, I allow myself to have that negative moment, but I'm not a negative person. I'm an analytical person. I'm not saying I'm a positive person either but i'm like things can be things or problems are just um sentences streamed together right so i can't amazon is no longer taking inbound shipments huh well that's okay i have three months of supply in there no worries but they're not shipping any of the stuff that's in oh well that's a problem you know meltdown you know and when i say meltdown like i don't want to it sounds like i just was went and had 25 drinks and like just it, it meant it was some cursing that's what a meltdown is for me it's some cursing and maybe a little tantrum and like what am i supposed to do now like are they trying to put me out you know like just crazy stuff but it's short but the the attitude is that you 
there's nobody to blame here. There's nobody to, um, it's nobody's fault. You're in, you're in charge of you, so you can't say you're a victim. You have to take control. You have to take, and again, back to mindset, you have to take um, responsibility because no matter what, every decision you've ever made in your life has led you to where you are right now. So at some point, you're responsible for X, even if it's only circumstance or happenstance. I mean, I got suspended because Amazon changed an algorithm, but at some point, there's a responsibility. You know, the algorithm they changed said that when I sold soap and someone didn't like it, you know, I didn't respond to it properly. Where is my responsibility and how can I address that? So um, I do, you know, I might go for a walk. I might clear my mind. But what happens to me a lot of times is I go to sleep. And I did when I was, went to college, I thought I wanted to be a computer programmer for like one minute. Um, and then 70,000 errors later, I'm like, or not. That seems like way too much negative feedback for me. Maybe there's something else I can do in business. Um, but, you know, looking at something and just taking into account that you're responsible for it and that I lost my train of thought there, but um, that, you know, when I can't figure something out, you just take a break. That was what I was thinking. You just take a break. I'll go to sleep. I would wake up in the morning and I would solve the problem I had in doing the computer programming. It would just be like right there for me. It's like, give yourself, give yourself a break. Give yourself a chance to just relax, walk away from it. Um, you know, 99 times out of 100, a situation that's horrible, you're still okay. You're still sitting there. You're still breathing. You're, nothing's attacking you. The, you know, the house isn't caving in. You're physically okay. We went um, skiing once. Uh, we've gone skiing a lot, but we went skiing once and we were driving up and there was an icy road and the car started spinning. And all the girls in the car, sorry guys, or the ladies, but we all screamed. And then we had to keep screaming because we were still spinning. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm fine. We're spinning at like half a mile an hour. It was just like slow motion. And sooner or later, something's going to happen. But right now, I'm fine and nothing's happening and I'm okay. And very slowly, we hit the guardrail and stopped. There wasn't even any damage to the car. But initially, it was freaky. And I, it was kind of a cathartic moment or a pivotal moment for me. I'm like, you know, there's no reason to overreact. Everything can be handled as long as you're safe at the moment, which we all are for most things. Um, you know, you want to react a little bit more adrenaline, maybe if you are going over a cliff. But, you know, it's just that that was really telling me, like, you know, it, just take it easy. Just take a step back and it'll all be okay. And and that's a, that's a great story, and that's something that I think a lot of people like should keep in mind in terms of when you're doing stuff too. I mean, like you're you're always quick to go to that bad place, or at least I I know I have been yeah. in the past. And and really, ultimately, at the end of the day, I mean, nothing is that terrible. Like I know I know when when I've looked back at like the terrible things that happened in my life, whatever they were, and I look at them from this perspective now of being on the other side of it. At the time, it was like the worst thing ever. But now right, it's like, right. okay, it's just something that you learn from and then you ultimately get past. And it wasn't so bad, right? Right. Yeah. And, it, and you can handle it. And like, now if that thing happened again, it's almost kind of good because it's so much easier to address it, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah, when that happened, I did this, this, and this, and that was fine. Like, uh, we lost a huge account this year um, because of coronavirus. They, they basically shut down their customers shut down. So they're currently in receivership. And I'm like, and I'm like, so are we going to do anything? <laughs> like, right. And we were about to do this whole exclusive thing, get them in luxury beauty out of all these plans. And then basically overnight, well, over Corona, over coronavirus night, they're gone. You know, we're, we're talking about back in January, we'll pick it up, but I may not be around then. Now I was counting on that for probably about fifty, sixty thousand dollars in profit this year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what do I do? Do I cry or no, I go look for something else, right? You know, I'm that's a horrible thing and I feel bad for them and their employees and you know and I'm I'm hoping they are gonna come out of it okay. But right now, as that affects me, it doesn't really affect me. There's other things I can do, there's other attacks I can take. It's not, you know, it's disappointing but it's not the end of the world. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And 
And th that kind of leads me into another, another thing I was going to ask you about as well. Uh, um, obviously, like the virus has, has affected a lot of things kind of going on in general, but obviously you, you've got so many things going on right now. You're, you've been able to pivot around the virus that's going on mm -hmm. and still, still come out. I, I remember when I talked to you in March when all this was starting up and you were like going crazy with, with all your merchant fulfilled orders at that point. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was like, we can't talk. I've got to like, okay. like, like so, move so, the corner of, yeah. Yeah, so, so so what would you say like right now with, with with the way things are now and the way that you've kind of been working on it? Um, so what would you say is your most important thing that you're working on right now? I think, um, again, I always say like 10% today for tomorrow was seeing past where we are today and moving forward. So we're looking at like subscription boxes. We're looking at other marketplaces. I'm developing more private label. I'm being cautious. I don't want to overextend myself because, you know, unlike, I used to like last year, I'm like, oh, I have so much to do. It's so crazy. And I'm wishing for the level of stress that I had in January versus now. Like, well, I have four thing, four private label things I want to start, but should I just do two? Mm -hmm. Should I just do one and then start another one the following month? I, you know, I'm sort of not, I wouldn't say analysis paralysis, but I'm being more careful mm -hmm. um, when I think of things now. Um, but yeah, so... You know, I wish I wish I could just say all guns blazing, and I'm trying to still be very bold, um, but at the same time, I'm I'm also cognizant of I don't know what's gonna I don't know in January there weren't too many shoes dropping, you know the other shoe dropping now there's other shoes dropping like I had that great deal, boom. On the other hand, another door opened, and I just replaced all the income um, basically from the first deal. Would have been nice if I had both of them but I probably wouldn't have considered the second thing to the extent that I ultimately did if my brain hadn't opened up and looked at it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, well maybe, oh, if I did that, that, oh, okay. You know, like my whole process. And I probably would have just ignored it. So, you know. Yeah. Did I answer the question? I don't know if I answered the question or if I just ran on. No, I, I think it was good, good. And, and, and obviously I know one of the things that, that really works for you too and, and like, I would say it's because we've been talking about it um, like o over however long we've known each other now. But uh, uh, like um, you kind of get that like relationship aspect where like you start to network with people, you start to to like know, know more people, like like obviously that's helped you out on your side. And and I assume that's that's probably how you, you end up getting some of the like the new accounts you got, right? In terms of- you Yeah, it, it, exactly. And to me, like, you know, people go, oh, just email them and open the account. I'm like, I may start there, but I always follow up with a call and say, hi, I, you know, I emailed you to open an account. I just want to introduce myself, blah, blah, blah. Nobody does that. Um, because they're like, oh, I got the account open. I'll make a put an order in. I'm like, no, you need to talk to them. And I'll always ask um, at least once a quarter, um, if not more, I'll call up my vendors. And, you know, and over time, I have tighter relationships with fewer vendors. Um, and this is also my private label vendors, too, because I don't actually make anything. It comes from someplace. Like, what can I do to help you? They're like, what are you doing right now? How can I help you? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you could buy a bunch of stuff. I'm like, well, that's not what I mean. Let's talk more strategically. What can I do to help you strategically? So one of our customers, um, or so one of my vendors, rather, we have an exclusive with uh, a custom journal company. And, or, an, um, yeah, they're like a fancy journal company. And I said, um, you know, what can we do? And, and they had on terms, and I said, well, could you, could you just pay us without terms right now? We're having a cash flow issue. I was like, absolutely not a problem because we're not, you know, we're talking, I'm buying hundreds a week, not thousands or tens of thousands, no problem. Um, and I said, but let's talk about that. Like I buy all this stuff from you, but there's all these other things that I haven't bought because I don't know if they're going to sell. And I've thought about them and I could push them and everything, but why don't we try a dropship model? And they're like, I don't like dropship model. I'm like, no, 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 not a dropship model. Like I just throw it over to you. I'm literally saying like, I will sell it and then I'll print out the label and the, and the shipping label and the packing slip and you just, and you just put it in the mail for me mm -hmm. and you can charge me a fee for that. And they're like, oh, I said, and that way I can test the things that I normally wouldn't buy. And if they do well, we can do more and more and more. And that'll help you with cash flow because those are things I would never have bought anyway, you know, because I wouldn't have time like, you know, eh. but if I can make listings and you'll fulfill them timely, and we have that relationship. So that really helped them. And that really helped me because now I'm getting like a free like view in to like some of their, some of their journals are a couple hundred dollars a piece. They're leather bound. Then I go 
about all this stuff. I don't really want to, I don't know how quickly they're going to sell. I'm going to have to sit on them for six months. Well, if, I only, if they can just sell them, it's much better. Um, and I've done that with a lot of vendors. Like one of the vendors I called and I said, hey, I really like this product. Have you ever thought, and they're like, oh, well, we're trying to like help the brick and mortars right now. And I'm like, I understand. But here's what I would like to do when you have a second. I would like to private label one of your products. I mean, you know, you already make it, you already manufacture under your name. How many, and they say, oh, well, that would be like 2,000 units. I'm like, I'm ready to do 2,000 units. Let's do it. So we're in the works for that. And that's just trying to, you know, relationships. So I'm not just a, like, oh, yeah, she orders this every six weeks. You know, just somebody, some person. Um, one of the vendors I write out and said, you always ask me how we can sell more. Here's how we can sell more. Go in and put videos on all your listings. Go, we'll do all this. And, you know, other people don't do that, I don't think. And, and it's, it's being creative about how you can not just take from the relationship, but give in the relationship. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think those are great points. I, I mean, I know, obviously, I, I, I'm, I'm more on the private label side than the wholesale side. But I remember, like, when I was deep into wholesale, like, it was always that, that flip that you had to make. And I'm surprised that more sellers weren't doing this, where um, it, you, you want to think of the brands that you're working with as your customers. Like, like mm -hmm. if you were selling to anybody like on Amazon or any, or your own website or anything like that, you want to make sure your customer is happy. Well, right. in this scenario, your brand is your customer. So mm -hmm. what can you do to always give them a great experience? Like it's just, it's the idea that like you were saying of, of, of like reaching out and making sure that they are, are getting all their, their needs met and going above and beyond it. And that's, and really at the end of the day, all we're ever talking about with business is relationships. Right. And, and that and that's the big thing like you were just talking about i mean um ultimately we like, don't have trade shows right now so i used to that used to be my big thing is i get on in you know on the plane or I get in the car or the train go to the trade shows in new york or vegas they aren't there right now i mean i guess some people are having them but i can't imagine there's much attendance <laughs> by either the vendor or you know sellers mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, so so great thoughts on this and uh and this kind of leads me into one of the things uh, that I also wanted to ask you. So obviously like you're, I, I've always thought you're great. You're great in terms of whenever I'm talking to you, it, 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 it always feel like I never want to uh, stop talking to you. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, uh, So that, that's the part. It looks like you're, yeah, that you like, but what, what's the part of the business that you love the most? Um, the problem solving part. I love to find, so I love when I can find something, I don't know how the way, a way to say it, clever. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was looking at a product the other day and I called the vendor like, oh, that's discontinued. And but you could buy 5,000 of them. I'm like, 5,000? It's like, that's so many. And so I said, well, let me think about it. And I was like amazed that they even offered that to me because it seemed it was a licensed product and everything. So I when I looked at it like 5,000, that'd be so much money. But it's only like a dollar a piece. It's only five thousand dollars. But I was just think I was just stuck on how many units there were, and I would it's something I can bundle with something else. So I was thinking like, wow, that's so many. How long would that be? Well, if I did, you know, it was like it's like fourteen months before I get the money back, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, we're talking five thousand dollars. Like, let's look at it that way. And I realized that if I looked at it more closely. That five thousand dollars may take seven, may take 13, 14 months to come back to me. But it's six. It, it turns when I put it with this other thing in that time frame, I'll make seventy thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars. Okay, yeah, I think I can. <laughs> I can hold on to five thousand dollars in that time. I, yeah, we're okay. We're okay. Good. You know. So those are like the things. Like my father used to say to me. Um, he was a builder, and he was. Um, he grew up in the depression. And so like, you know, what took us two years when he died to clean his whole house out because like he saved string and paper clips and rubber bands and, um, and you couldn't throw anything out because at the bottom of a coffee can could be like 10 gold coins or something. So, and he was a hoarder. So everything took forever, but he used to say to me like, what do you, what do you do for a living? And like, wow, well, what do they pay you for that? I was like, I, and I kept trying to explain him because well, why do people need to do why do they need somebody like so many people to do budgets? Like, shouldn't they just like see what you sell and everything? Like, well, they have to figure it out. And he could never really get it. And I said, Dad, remember Jack and Jill 
you know, are, are Susie and Bob are, are driving in a car, they're traveling at each other, and one's going 40 miles per hour and 50 mm -hmm. miles, and how soon will they meet? That's all I do is solve big word problems. And that's really challenging to me. I really enjoy all the nuances and all the um, components of how that could work. Like, you know, exactly when you're talking in this business, like how many would be in a box? How many quickly could I turn over? Can I leverage it to another marketplace? Could I optimize the listing? Is there some other thing I can do with it? You know, can I go into, is there a catalogs or something like that? So all those facets for me are really, really fascinating. And, and to the extent that there's anything in terms of, let me turn my phone off here. Um, if there's anything in terms of um, components that I can leverage, it's huge to me. I just love the problem solving aspect of it and the creative side too. So if I can create, like with the private label is so much fun because I can create so many cool things like, hey, what if we did a bath bomb or what if we did this? I'm like, to me, that's just, that jazzes me. What I hate more than anything else is prepping. So got rid of that as quick as I could. <laughs> <laughs> so you say that that's probably the, the part of the business you hate, the, you, that you love the Oh, least. I hate prepping when, when one of our prep, like when we're super busy and I have to step in on occasion, somebody's sick, like with the virus, we didn't have any preppers. So my husband and I are prepping and I was like, oh, it's horrible. I hate this. <laughs> You know, and we're prepping and we're packing and we're filling because everybody had to go home. Um, I hated that. So then we got some, we, we still don't have everybody back. We still just have family doing it. But I, my son finished, high, he's he's in high school, so all summer he has to work for me. He, he hates it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember. Home playing video games. But I'm like, yeah, no, you're not going to get to stay in the house all day for the whole summer. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember, I, I think, when it was just you uh, at that time and, and, you were so stressed out when it was just you. So doing, exhausted. Uh, it's like, this is horrible. It's like, I, cause there were all these other things. So 10% today for tomorrow, um, building brands, doing all this other stuff, um, making relationships, uh, making those better. I can't do that if I have to put stuff in bags, mm -hmm. right? You know, that takes so much time and then put things in boxes and get that out. And then, you know, it was so nitty gritty um crossing t's dotting i's what is amazon what is amazon because they were changing the rules mm -hmm. right if i'm not selling anything what do i how do i respond to that how do i solve for that like what can i do you know at one point my husband's saying when the virus first started happening he's reading everything and we're in the hot spot so we're in new jersey so we're the first hot spot um right outside new york and he's he's i'm trying to amazon's telling me they're not doing this and they're not doing that and at the same time my husband's telling me people are dying like, like left and right and the coronavirus is going to get you and you can get it from the dot and i'm like will you be quiet no more of this i can only handle one like column of crisis at a time and right now you know having an income would be a good thing so you know because when they started when amazon started changing our income went like Right, you know, for a couple of weeks there was no. They're like, oh yeah, nothing essential there, like teddy bears and books. Fortunately, we had some soap, which helped a lot. But, hush. <laughs> yeah, I I remember. I think when all that started, I think, um, I think my my wife for the first like week or two or whatever it was, like you would always kind of hear that every day there was some kind of a, a brief and like the president or like for us it was like the governor and the mayor would would always come on and I don't know if they still do or not but but uh and, and then like after a week or two it's like we're just like I know she stopped <laughs> like, like at that point it's like it was all negative and like I just completely stayed away from it I, I guess you can kind of look at it as like I was in my own bubble maybe but my thought is what can I really control that's out there right now it's a spinning car right the car yeah. is spinning and you're in it but there's no reason to panic yet. Nobody's sick. Everybody's fine. Figure out what I need to do in regards to that. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'll stay home. You know, we basically just went back and forth to the warehouse. We we're the only ones here. Um, and some days, like in the, in the very beginning, we weren't sure what the heck was going on. So we just come in, do our merchant fulfilled and get the heck out of here. And I would work from home. But then it got to be, you know, not, not as big an issue. We sort of tapered off in this area. But yeah, so like... I can't, I can't go crazy with it. I can't, I can't focus on it. It's, it's, you know what? No, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's, it's so, not a minute by minute thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I think at this point, like, like a lot of people have kind of figured that, that out too. It's like, all right, well, well yeah, you can kind of leave. Like this is one of the things I was, I was thinking at, obviously at the time, like, obviously like you're always got to be careful. Um, and, and, but ultimately you're in business for a reason. 
Um, so you can either try and, and look at the negative side of things and, and be fearful about it, or what can I do? Um, mm -hmm. And look at it from the perspective, all right, I can control what I can control. And let's focus on the business. Obviously, let's let's focus on being careful and safe. But, but um, from the business aspect, well, I got stuff to do. Like, there's a reason I'm doing this in the yeah. first place, right? Exactly. So, so just kind of go from that perspective, but, um, well, that's like when I got suspended, like I, I allowed myself a day or two to like feel sorry for myself. But then I'm like, I, you know, once I offloaded the getting reinstated to Cynthia, I was like, this is time. What can I do with this? I'm going to look at my product mix. I'm going to look at where I go after this. Am I going to still do RA? I'm going to move away from RA. I'm going to do wholesale. And when I do, and then, you know, down the road, I'll do private label, whatever. But, you know, how do I address this? How do I use this time? Just sitting here waiting for the sun to rise it is not a good use of time. There's, there's things that can be done. There's things that can be addressed. Yeah, yeah, def definitely. And, and I, I think that was the same thing that I kind of did in terms of, uh, obviously, I, I didn't go through the same thing that you did, but um, I, I woke up to, I think, I think it was like IP, like uh, the uh, you sold as new complaints on my account. And, and um, of course, like a, a $25 crack shipment. We're like, they're like, oh yeah, you, uh, by the way, we're not accepting your shipment and, and you get to pay for it to get returned to you, by the way. Um, what? Yeah. So, so it was like, at that point, I, I kind of did the same thing you did where it was like, all right, well, um, I'm stressed to hell out of this. <laughs> at, at that point, like I got to figure out a better way, right? That, that's all this ever comes down to. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, still use them for the amazing channel that they are, but, but ultimately, how can you pivot? How can you figure out a better way to do this? I did. I started to feel like a ballerina for like the month of April and, and for March and April, I was like, okay, now what are we doing? Now we're doing this. And it's like, but you know, what's amazing is because there was only so much you could do. I realized that like, um, Robin, uh, Johnson had, uh, um, a, a um, webinar with great joy. And I was like, well, let me look at that. I've always been interested in that. Let me see the viability of that. And much like I looked at Amazon for the viability, you know, when I, back when I started, I couldn't believe that this FBA thing was real. I remember I sent my first box and going, bye bye if I ever see you again, you know, and then like it showed up on my account, like that worked. All right, let's do that again. I just couldn't, you know, it just seemed unreal. And the same with Crate Joy. I'm like, all right, let me see what the credibility is that. Maybe that's an avenue because we are very dependent um, Amazon sellers on Amazon. And, you know, you and I have talked about this a lot about how to get away from that dependency and to grow your brand and do that. And that, that is the Mecca that is the Nirvana, but it's always, it's not always that easy to walk away from the gravy train. You know, cause we do a lot of, a lot of things work really well on Amazon and you can say, Oh, I'm not doing that anymore. So. Yeah. And, and that's the big thing. I mean, uh, like no one's saying you have to be away from Amazon, but just right. for the amazing channel it is, but don't be completely reliant on them for everything, right? Well, you got to go back and look at eBay. eBay was all the rage, right? And everybody was complete. Where we are with Amazon, everybody was screaming, you know, like, oh, eBay, you know, they're making all these rules. It's terrible. And also Amazon came and ate their lunch <laughs> and something will someday eat Amazon's lunch. So, you know, on the one hand, we're, we're on Amazon, we're on Walmart, we're on eBay, we're on Bonanza, which might not be on anymore. Um, we're looking at Google, putting our Google Shopping back in place. Ooh, that's a good thing to know. Google Shopping right now is charging new commissions because mm -hmm. they're trying to capture, you know, trying to, you know, get caught up to Amazon. Mm -hmm. So will, all, will any of those things beat Amazon? I don't know. I Probably not. But they're going to be, we, we do a lot of business on Walmart. We do a decent business on eBay. And those are extra sales that I wouldn't have if I just kept looking at Amazon. Um, and should I get suspended again, um, I've got other channels that are already built. I'm not trying to, I know a lot of people um, when I was doing this, said, oh, you sell on Amazon? Oh, can you help me get started? And I would look at where they were and they were, or they, they had let everything go so badly that, you know, they're already in bad straits before we got there. And I'm like, Oh, um, okay. I can help you, but you know, it's wow. You know, <laughs> it's hard. Um, you know, so you've got to start doing stuff way before the doors start closing on you for whatever that is. You've got to be diversified. You've got to have a, a backup plan. Mm -hmm. Although mine's always been being a bartender again. <laughs> when, I was, when I was college, I was a bartender. So I can only, people always want to drink. But right now you couldn't be a bartender, so maybe that's not true. 
Yeah, I didn't know you were a bartender. Uh, yeah, I was in college. It was, I was, again, just like um, I started doing used stuff, then retail arbitrage. It's like in college, um, I was working at a retail job. I was like, this is terrible. I'm not making any money for the time I'm you know, doing this. It's got to be something else. So then I started waiting tables. I'm like, this is, you know, bartender job looks really good. Mm -hmm. So between waiting on tables and the bar, I mean, I, I worked at an Irish restaurant. So mm -hmm. on St. Patrick's Day, you could walk out with a thousand dollars in your pocket and tips because, you know, St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like that, that was the best job I ever had for not having my degree yet or any skills or anything, because the harder I worked, I could actually see the results in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it was a lot better than working at a, you know, a convenience store, a supermarket, or a retail store. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I've been on that side of the business too. Obviously, like I, I came from the music, uh, mu musician background. Mm -hmm. So like I was, I was around all those bars all the time, <laughs> kind of seeing the <laughs> bartenders every night. Uh, yeah, it's a very different profession I think, than than a yes. lot of different ways. It's a very interesting thing, like. Oh, we won't digress. <laughs> Maybe another time I'll tell you some interesting stories of being a girl bartender in retail. So it's just like, no, I'm not, do I'm not doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, um, as, as being usually the only sober person in the band. Um, and, and the only sober person in the bar as a bartender, too. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I've seen a lot of stories too. I'm sure we can talk about that. Probably <laughs> not in, in this episode, but somewhere else. Probably, probably for a... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm laughing now. I'm thinking of a couple of things. But anyway, next question. Get another question going really quick. Yeah. So so so. Uh, all right. So as we transition here, um, um, <laughs> uh, one of the things that uh, uh, I I know I I have problems with sometimes is you've always got so many things that you want to do. Like obviously um, with Q4 coming around and all the Amazon craziness uh, that's been going on and the virus and everything else along those lines, um, uh, it's hard to get everything you want to get done. Um, a mm -hmm. um, so do you have any kind of uh, uh, way that seems to help you to get the most out of your day? So I'm ADD. So as a rule, my, uh, and I never had the medicine or anything like that. Um, it, my parents, when I was, they said, oh, you're just lazy. I'm like, I'm not lazy. I can't stay focused for more than five minutes. But, you know, they didn't accept that. And, and, and you had to get A's, so it didn't matter. So, and, and basically, if I got straight A's, they left me alone. I mean, I could literally stay out all night. Although the one time that did happen, I got yelled at and they said, right, you got to be in here by like one. Um, but, you know, as long as I had good grades and I, I found a way to do that. And the way I did that is I was a compulsive list maker. And that's what I do now. I make lists, I make lists, I make lists. And I don't always go through the list like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? But every night when I go home, I make the list again. And I, re I prioritize the most important things. Another thing I started doing is so the people who work for me, are still working for me, but they're working from home. So that means we had to change roles a little bit. Um, I'm doing, uh, the, the woman that um, worked for me is at home now, Maria, she does our replan. So she would come in every day. She, she manages, uh, she's like the account manager for our, our um, the accounts that we manage, obviously. And she also did the replan for my business. So she would go out there get all the stock ready and get it to the preppers. Well, she's not here to do that anymore. So I have to do that. And the, the preppers are now my kids. Um, and we alternate, when, and my father-in-law. My father-in-law always was a prepper, but, um, so I have to do that now. So she has to do some of the things that I did, because that means that's an, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes of my day, I don't have any more. So I routinely go through that list every morning going, oh, that's, no, she can do that. And I look at the next thing and I'm like, oh, that's gonna take, no, if I'm, she can do that. So she's taken on a lot more work. We've had training sessions and whatever we needed to do, so that those things get done and they don't get stuck behind um, their, their replan or the other manual things that we've had to kick in for because we don't have people here to do it. Um, so that's sort of how I've approached it is I look at that list every day and every night and I say, all right, I'll do it this time, but it's on the list for the next time. But most of the time I'm saying she's going to do it yeah. and, and, or I'm going to offload it. And what's great about you were just what you were just saying as well as I know it's not, never been an issue for me, I guess, because I've always just looked at it as like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to push it. <laughs> well, I work hard, not always smart, unfortunately. I was but, like, but, well, I don't want to bother anybody with that. It's so, it'll take me longer. Like, I always said, sad to say, it'll take me longer to explain it than to, to just get it done. Mm -hmm. And I've had to fight that. So mm -hmm. I fight it and get rid of it. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I, I know that's like a thing that a lot of uh, business owners do have a problem with just in terms of um, they, they, they want to do everything themselves. Like they have uh -huh. a really hard time with like letting go because, and, and, and it is true. I mean, the idea like nobody will do it as good as you, right? Um, uh, is it, that no one's going to love it as much as you do. But ultimately right. at some point, if you're going to have any, anything more than just a solopreneur kind of a one man shop, then you got to figure out a way to start to come and up. Scale, with like scale that. requires it, right? So I need to have a certain amount of my day, maybe not every day, but at least a solid day a week, a whole eight hours where I'm analyzing, where I'm looking at how we scale more, how we grow more, how, or maybe a better way to say how we do more with less. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to be, um, Eddie Levine always says, work on your business, not in your business. Mm -hmm. But right now I have to work in my business. I don't have that luxury because I can't have the people in place to do that because we've got, you know, um, you know, we're in our fifties, but my in-laws are in, you know, older and we can't expose them to anything. They won't make it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get sick, maybe have a horrible time, but they won't make it. So we have to be cautious of all the family members. So nobody's coming. We're not, we're not mingling. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, those, those are definitely great thoughts in terms of, that. I, I know, um, uh, I lost my train of thought nice to, here as well. Right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, since I forgot, I guess we'll I'll move on to the next thing. Make a list. Yeah. Just oh, have to make oh, a list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was one thing I was, I was going to say. Like, um, I, uh, when you were saying that, that, that's one of the things I, I, I myself love doing too. And it, it's cool that you, I know we, as we talked about, like the important things and the stuff that actually kind of grows your business, that's the thing that I think really does help. Like, yeah. um, like, because you're always going to have um, those emergencies that come up obviously especially with the virus especially having to pivot where mm -hmm. like you're saying for you you had to start fulfilling yourself and doing it that way but but if you only focus on those things and you never focus on those priorities then right. you're never going to make any progress and and that's what's great about what you were doing obviously with with list building and and what what's the big thing that i can focus on like i i i love that i mean uh, that that that's something i always try and do and like Whenever, like, I see a lot of business owners doing that same, like, the as I look at it as a problem, it's like, all right, yes, um, you're, you're dealing with this fire that you have to put out, and there's always going to be fires. But, always uh, going to be fires. Someday yeah. the fires are all consuming, but, you know, it's a good day when I can do something else. I'm like, oh, oh, I can get, I can start looking at this. So, you mm -hmm. know getting the products, like building the subscription model plan, finding the products, you know, putting them in place. How am I going to market? What am I going to do? That yeah. to me is exciting. It's new. I've never done it. Um, it's got lots of challenges and for me to figure out some of them I won't like, but some of them I will like. And solving that makes me feel really good. Like oh, solve that word problem, you know, like mm -hmm. A plus. But <laughs> gold star. Yeah. And that's where obviously like for you, you've identified a part of the business that you love that that gets you excited and that's where everyone they can have a different purpose obviously like like they have a, a, a different part of the business that they're passionate about i mean that's what's great about what we do is that right. if, if you actually take the time to figure out what you're passionate about then you can have any type of success you want and focus on that part of it like you've, yeah. you've identified the word problems is something you're really passionate about obviously relationships you're great with and and be able to come at things from from a different perspective where that's helped you i'll say for, for me i uh, i'm gonna look at it differently right and then everyone else is gonna have their own way so like that's the big thing that i kind of take away is, is like all right yeah um however you want to do it, it's fine there's no one way that has to be it just right it, right now that's, I guess the others, the third leg of that stool for me is the ideation, right? So it's being able to solve the word problems, it's doing new things, but it's also being able to extend um, something I'm really good at. And it took me a long time to say I'm really good at anything. I don't know why. It's, it's, it sounds like maybe my upbringing is a little boasting. You're not allowed to boast. Mm -hmm. But I'm really good at is if someone says, oh, we went here and there. And I'm like, oh, did you think about doing this? And I notice that people like never even occurred to me. I mean, I can naturally extend the thought process in the new avenues of opportunity. And to me, that like is so fun. Like if I could just do that, I was like, that would be great. If they were like, oh, we need you to come consult and like extend our brand line. Yes, I would love to, but I haven't found that job yet. 
<laughs> yeah, I know we've talked a few times on the phone and you, you kind of brought up something like, I never thought of anything like that. <laughs> and, and just something that you're like, oh, wow, okay, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so, nice. Added yeah. value. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one thing I, I did want to ask you as well was, um, and th this is something that I, I personally struggle with and I, it took me a while to figure it out on my end. But like, um, like what is, um, for you, what is a work-life balance? Well, fortunately, none of my family are in the room right now to contest this, so I can say whatever I like. <laughs> um, <laughs> so work-life balance is for me is not, you know, I go to work nine to five and I go home and I have, you know, family time, we play games and everything. My kids are older. My, my daughter's 22, so she's off to her boyfriend's house this weekend. My son's 17, so he spends most of his time in his room on video games. So we're out like we're empty nesters with two kids still in the nest. But um, work-life balance for me is having the flexibility that if Friday we decide we're going to leave early and um, we're going to go um, uh, kayaking or something like that, we can do it. So the balance isn't about a time limit. It's about the flexibility. And it's something I never had when I worked. When I was in corporate America, I mean, I work now, but when I was in corporate America, it's like, go to work, come home, work some more because you've got deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. And, you know, I'd be sitting there on a couch and I'd just be like, you know, a vacuum, like just like, sitting there, like just, I got nothing left. It's all been sucked out of me. Um, so now it's being able to have those things that I like in the business and being able to do them, you know, not all the time, but when I can get to them, which is, you know, I try to make it a priority. Um, and that gives me energy. And then when we want to do, so like right now we're not doing anything. Basically, what we do is we go to work, we go home, we sit in the pool. Well, maybe not for a couple more days till the tree's out of it. Um, and then, you know, I'll go back and I'll do some work and I'll do the fun parts at night that I like to do or, or something like that. But yeah, so there's not really work life balance in as much as the flexibility. Yeah, and I think a lot of business owners too, they talk about like, like the reason why they got into it the, the, is like the freedom, the flexibility, and really. I mean, when, when you're looking at it, I mean, in terms of the work-life balance, this is one of the things I know that uh, works for me in terms of uh, it, it's being present with wherever you are. Um, so, so, all right, if I'm working, then yes, I'm going to work and I'm going to do whatever, whatever, everything I can with it. But I also, at the, uh, at the end of the day, if I know like my purpose, like for me, it's, it's about my, like part of it is about family. So if I'm going to be at that point, um, spending time with my family or whatever it is, I need to be there and I need to disconnect. And, and, and it's really hard, obviously for business owners where your mind is always on the business, right. but, but the idea of like, well, I, I don't, yes, I want to, I, I always had that mentality of grinding and grinding, but ultimately um, like spend as much time as you're going to spend on the business. But then when it, when it's over and you, you're spending time with family, then just make that your priority. And that's like, so it's like right. the whole counterbalance thing of like, all right, I'm going extreme in this one direction and then I'm going to go extreme in the other. And then at that point I try as much as I can, but uh, it's like, all right, I, I know it's always going to be in your head, right? It's like, Oh, I got to go back to this other thing. Cause you can never turn it off. But at that point, well, all right, I'm, I'm with my family. I got to be with my family. And so it's that whole counterbalance thing of like just being completely immersed in that when you're there. Kind of thing. It's energy too, is having any energy left over. And when I worked in corporate, I had no energy left over. So I might have the physical time like, all right, I don't have any deadlines to get to. Um, I'm home by six o'clock and we've got four hours. I'm basically sitting on the couch exhausted. So there was no brain cells left um, to do that. And last night, um, we had an oddity in the house. We don't have cable right now because the hurricane had knocked it out. So all four of us hung out in the kitchen together and talked. And we're all like, this is weird. Because, you know, we would eat dinner together or we'd hang out while I made dinner. You know, my daughter is vegan, so she makes her own food. And, um, you know, and people talk and we get along with each other. But we never sit together because... You know, she's going to go talk to her boyfriend. My son's going to go play his video games. My husband's watching um, some news channel. And, of course, I'm on the computer doing something for work. Um, it's not 100% of the time, but last night was really nice to have, like, that force. So I said, you know, I'm going to have to break the Internet once a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I don't it, know. What's wrong with this? Wires are terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, and I, I think it's something that, like, like you're saying, we, we all – to a certain level, we, we struggle with it, right? When you're you're kind of um, you're always thinking about something else you could be doing business wise. But like like right. I, I did the same thing. Like uh, was it uh, I 
I'm trying to make it a priority of like, all right, um, I, I know I'm always going to have something that I want to do on the business side, but ultimately kind of remember like you're, you, you got family, obviously in, in my case, in your case, and there's a reason and, and they're your loved ones. They're part of the reason you do what you do. So don't like, at the end of the day, like when you're 80 or 90 or whatever it is, are you going to look back and, and, oh, I, I really wish I, I um, I, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or at that point you're going to look back and go, oh, oh well, I, I, I didn't spend time with, with the people I loved or whatever it was because I was trying to get an extra $5,000. Yeah. And that's an interesting perspective because it's not that I don't want to be with family, but this, these problems are pulling me. Like mm -hmm. I want to solve these problems. Um, so I make it like when my husband says, Hey, I'm going to go swimming. I'm, like, I'm going to go with you, you know, but maybe my inclination might be, like, I just got to go check Amazon real quick, but I don't, I just, I'm going to go with you. It will hold. And a lot of what I've done in the last year, maybe last two years is make that possible. Like our goal. And he laughs at me, but I have to show him because if you watch an ant crawl across the floor, he doesn't make much progress. But if you look at where he started to where he ended up, it's huge, right? Especially in ant terms, because they're so teeny tiny. Um, if you look at our business and I said, you know, he'll say, oh, well, you'll never retire. I was like, you're probably right, but it'll move, it won't look like this in 10 years. It won't look like, you know, it'll be different. Like, remember how many things, remember when we used to do RA? He goes, oh, that was a nightmare because there's so many different things. It was chaos. It wasn't to me, but for him. And I said, I remember how this, and I said, there's a lot less stuff here, isn't there? It's like more successful things, less trial things, less things, you know, so over time, like this was supposed to be our first summer of a trial two to four weeks away from the business. Mm -hmm. where the, the woman that I hired that works for me, she's keeping tabs. We go somewhere for two weeks. We stateside still. We're not ready for the, the Europe thing. And for a month. And, uh, and basically, I'm incommunicado. So I'm on in the morning for an hour or two, I'll check everything, do what I need to do, and then I'm out. And she keeps anything, any fires um, from, you know, anything from catching on fire. And that's where we want to be is that, you know, my son graduates high school in a year. Um, maybe a year after that, we want to go to Monaco for a month or to Italy for a month and just spend a month there. As long as they have Wi-Fi, I can check in, but I don't need to be in it. Mm -hmm. I can just be overseeing it. You know, we'll get out RV and travel or, well, we want to go look for meteorites or something like that. My husband wants to chase tornadoes. I don't want to catch any. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, as long as we don't catch any. I know it's a bad joke, but, you know, they look really cool on the TV, but you're not near, you know, the, I've seen a, never seen one in person. And I don't know if I do want to see one in person, but, but yeah. So those are the kind of things that we ultimately want to get to. Yeah. And we make progress every, every day. Yeah. And, and that's the big thing too, in terms of like, you're always so in it, like you're, you're in the trenches and you're like looking at things and you, you think to yourself like, Oh, I didn't make any progress or whatever it is. But then if you're actually able to step out and look at like, like, like it's one of the things that I try and do every week is like, like you try and look at your week even like at the end of the week and you're like, Oh wow, look at what I did. You don't ever think you did anything, but like, I know at, like, uh, if you're talking about creating lists. I do the same thing where like, I, I, I usually like, I'll do a roadmap and I'll do like, um, like a uh, 12 week year is one of the books I read and I'm putting that into play like in the next couple of weeks. And the idea is like, all right, here's what I want to be in the next three, three months. And, uh, and then from there you're writing out all of the, the steps and the, and the goals and the, and what's going to get you there, that kind of thing. And then you actually look at the end of each week. You're like, okay, I actually did. I, I made I something cool. happen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that same kind of thing. Like, you're in it, but you're, you're like, Oh, nothing happened today. It, it sucked. But then like, like, I know I, I do like journals and other stuff where you actually can look back, like actually it's a way of, of coming out of it and like not being so like down on yourself. You're like, Oh, nothing yeah. happened. But then, okay. Well, that's kind of being an action junkie too. Like I was like, like a lot of stuff happening, but then at a certain point, like no more stuff happening, please. That's enough <laughs> stuff happening. You're reminding me. I want to see if I, we, we, talked about books and there was a book that I was reading and basically um and it was like it's like get your act together book mm -hmm. and it's just like you don't you know you're you're let me see if I can find the title of it I started reading it declare war on yourself okay. and it was something I saw someone on face um I think Sam Collins he was reading and so let me look at that um and it basically says how to stop the destructive behaviors 
I don't really think I have a lot of destructive behaviors, but a couple of things, it's just like, oh, I don't feel like doing that. I don't feel like, you know, just grow up, get that done. Mm -hmm. You're 50 or 50 something and we won't get specific. We're 50 something years old. You should, you should be doing this. This isn't you're like, oh, I don't feel like doing that. Yeah, do it. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Yeah. And, yeah. and that, that's really one of the big things too. Like, I know, like, I've seen other people that I've, I've been around where they're always of that negative mindset in a, in a way where like, oh, well, well, it's, it's the victim mentality or it's um, whatever it is where like. Oh, they make it so hard to sell on Amazon. It's like, you can, yeah. it's not the way to look at it. They're not after you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you can do whatever you want with your life is, I know it sounds all like rah, rah and hoo hoo or whatever, but, <laughs> yeah. but ultimately like you can be 67 years old. And if you're, really into it and you're looking at it from a perspective of i can do whatever i need to 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 change and and become the person i want to be then you can still get there um but yeah. it, it, it's just usually that like like was it I, I would venture to say 90 95 percent of the people out there um uh end up they are the way they were at 20 or 30 years old and they're going to be that way until they die just because it, it's always somebody else's fault or i, oh, I can't change or any of that kind of stuff right um so so uh, anybody can do it. I mean, it, it, but it is like the, the mentality part of it, which really comes into play of like, all right, I have to be accountable for this. I have to look at it from a positive perspective and take all of the steps needed so that I can, I can get where I want to go. Cause it's not going to be, mm -hmm. easy, and that's fine. Um, yeah. So, so as you're talking about different things that you want to focus on, I mean, uh, I don't care how old you are, you can still do it. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, you definitely can. It's just, it doesn't, a lot of, I, I won't try not to be specific, but I've heard, you know, oh, you're, you're, you're smart like that. You can do that. I'm like, I'm not like, you know, a Rhodes Scholar here. It's just applied theory. I mean, you could do it too. Oh, I can't do that. They don't like this and they don't like that. And if I were to do that, they would, I'm like, how do you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm not embarrassed at all to make a phone call and embarrass myself. I'm like, oh, well, that didn't go well. Who cares? I'm not going to think about that in a week. All right. You know, what did I learn from that? Don't start off by saying this or don't start off by saying that or, you know, talk slower, talk faster, whatever, you know, but, you know, it's just not life defining for me. Like, oh, I can't do that. That's no good. Why can't you do that? Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. And, and, and that's if you the want part to. Of, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's the part. I, I love what you're saying, too, in terms of like, I've, I've always said, like, I, I'm, I, I don't claim to be smart at all. Like, like, uh, um, I look at it like there's a book um, by Carol Dweck that I, that had a big impact on me, like mindset, where they talk about like the idea of a fixed mindset versus growth mindset. And like people that are in a fixed mindset will always look at it like, um, are you smart? Are you talented? Um, uh, mm -hmm. like, like, like those kinds of a label where, where you're always looking at through that lens versus the, the lens of, Am I learning from this? Am I growing from this? Am I, cause, cause I mean, when you started on Amazon, when you started with e-commerce, any of that stuff, you didn't know anything. And then you learned and then you kept growing. You, you made a bunch of mistakes, right? You took it as feedback and then you just kept getting better and better at it. Right. So. And I'm trying to tell people, cause a lot of people have gone out and made really big mistakes. And I was like, make mistakes you can afford to make. If a friend wants to borrow money from you, never give them more than you can ever expect to get back. Cause it's probably never going to come back. If it comes back, that's great. Like, you know, but don't, don't go, Oh, here's a hundred thousand dollars. And then be upset that it's not coming back. Like don't, a lot of people have signed up with these scam companies, $25,000. I'm like, can you afford to lose $25,000? Not many people. I would be very unhappy if I lost $25,000. Can I afford to do, when I first started the Amazon thing, I said, I'm going to bet $500. Just five hundred dollars. That should give me an idea if there's something here for me, if I, if it's something I want to do. So I took five hundred dollars and bought every used stuffed animal like in the tri-state area. Um, and I, you know, someone got thrown away. You can buy a lot of stuffed used stuffed animals for five hundred dollars. And it was trying for me trying to figure out um, if this thing worked. Like I'd fix, I'd clean them, I'd fix them up, I'd put them on there. Would they sell? And when they sold, I'd learn how much money I got and, and how hard it was to send them in and what are the packaging requirements. But if it all didn't work out and I hated it, it was $500. Mm -hmm. But to spend, you know, let's make this, oh, you can join, and I'm not trying to, to ping on anybody, but you can um, come with us to China for a couple thousand dollars. Like if you don't even know how to sell on Amazon, would you, would you start there? 
Like, I would start, like, I can throw $1,000 away at this venture to see if it's for me. But I, I can't throw $10,000 away, or I wouldn't want to. Right. You know, that, so a lot of times you just have to figure out what your bet is, right? So a lot of things that we're doing, I'm like, all right, if this totally, I always ask my question, if this totally fails, what's the worst case scenario? I'm stuck with a lot of, uh, the first thing we ever bought was a, a teddy bear and I had to buy 1800 of them. It was the first, you know, like exclusive we ever had slash private label. I was like, it's a lot of teddy bears if this fails. <laughs> and it was a huge bet, but it was a bet. It was, um, I don't know, it was about $15,000 bet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I had qualifying it wasn't like i was just going oh i'll just do that it was like well here was the rank here were the reviews here's what it used to sell for here's other products like it here's the demand i could do all those things so when i finally made that bet it was after i had made bets at five thousand dollars that made sense that is all this built up information would i have walked out of corporate america sat down and said here's fifteen thousand dollars let's go uh -uh. <laughs> Now I needed to learn those, those, the, the go up that ladder of, you know, bigger and bigger bets. Um, some days I still am like, how, how much? <laughs> okay. Like so the, I got an opportunity the other day and I was like, $40,000. I'm like, no, and it's probably a great opportunity, but $40,000 on one thing. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. take too long to come back. The rank was okay, but I was like, mm, no, but it's out there when I want it. So maybe I'll, I'll learn more down the road. You know, some of the things I started with were okay. You know, they were steady sellers. I was just trying to make some money. You know, I didn't need a rocket, uh, you know, a rocket ship. And then we got some things that are more rockety ship, rocket shippy or whatever that are better. And I'll learn more from those and, you know, as you go through, but. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and those are definitely great thoughts in terms of, I mean, we're, we're always learning. And, and obviously like, I know I'm not now where I want to be compared to where I'll be in six months, right? You're always looking for something and you're learning from it. Um, so as we're kind of like uh, hitting down the home stretch, uh, like a couple of quick questions here. So like, this is one that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in as well is um, uh, everyone's got their own definition, but what's your definition of success? Mm -hmm. Oh, my definition of success? Yes. So someone's like, I have a friend, He every time I talk to him, he's getting machinery and a big giant warehouse and all that stuff. And, and I was like, I don't want that. My definition of success is being able to, um, I guess really is funny. I can't really articulate this. I think it's being able to build saleable assets. That is my definition of success. To me, ultimately where I would like to be is to be able to identify opportunities, cultivate them, put them in a nice little package present it to you and say for X, you know, thousands of dollars, this is yours and here's your ROI and blah, 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 blah. Um, so that to me would be, um, it's contained. It's, you know, where we are right now is not where we'll be with that. I have a path to get there. Um, and it's, you know, and it may not be the only thing we do, but that to me is like, I've mastered the process if I can do that. And I think we have our first one just starting to bubble up. So having income that, um, so that's part of it. So that's maybe the solving the big giant word problem part. So that solves for that. Other thing is to just have an income that keeps us going and then we can see the world and um, I'm not beholden to anybody's definition of what work is. You know, it's my definition. Um, and so I, you know, my husband and I will be able to go away for a month at a time well, the business just does what it does. You know, one of the nicest things about this business is, is while you're sleeping, things are selling. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go open a door and go in and open the store and turn the lights on. There's no store. There's no lights. It's or it's on 24 seven. So I don't know. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a great answer. And, and that's obviously what's great about what we do too. I mean, obviously like with the virus going on with the way that the world has been just in, I think over the last few, few years as well. I mean, e-commerce is, is had been heading in that direction anyway uh, where mm -hmm. like brick and mortar stores are kind of going the way of the dinosaur so i mean we're uh it's one of the things regardless of what's been happening in the world it's 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 the best place to be i think in a lot of ways because of like what you're saying you can make money um uh in any situation uh, so, and I'm, so, I'm gonna ask you a question because that's something that's been bothering me for six months are we lucky or something else are we lucky that this is what we're doing 
versus, you know, I could have had a Dunkin' Donuts, although Dunkin' Donuts would be killing it right now. But it would have suffered for a couple months because, of it, you know, it had to shut down and everything like that. And that was a path we looked at. The cost to do that was prohibitive. It was like a mm -hmm. half a million dollars just and like full stop, no other income. I'd just be like living in so much stress, I couldn't even deal with it. But the question that comes up in my mind a lot, I will say, I'm, I always will say I'm very grateful and I'm very lucky. I'm lucky to have had the parents I've had. I'm lucky to be born where I was born. I'm lucky to, you know, all these different things. Um, but I wonder, am I, when I think about online business, I'm like, oh, I'm so lucky that we do online. Mm -hmm. But, you know, then again, for a couple of weeks there, Amazon was online and it was not going good for us. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden they weren't shipping anything or doing anything. I'm like, so are we lucky? Are we smart? Are we fortunate? Is that just the way the cookie crumbles? I don't know. I don't think there's a right answer, but, um, like, did we have some omniscience, like, you know, versus opening a store? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you mean. I, I think ultimately, though, it, like, at the end of the day, I, I think a lot of times when luck, like, comes into it, I think it's that you're, you're doing the work and you're, you're mm -hmm. really focusing on, on things, too, because every day there's, what, thousands of people who are going to make a go of selling online, and then the last five mm -hmm. seconds, and they're like, oh, actually, that's this, true. this is work. Oh, that last, that's hard. I don't want to do that. That's work. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, everyone that's that's here that's been doing it. I mean, you you've gotten through through to some level of success, whatever that is for you, to mm -hmm. be able to to stick at it. And so so yeah yeah I, um, maybe uh, we picked something that like versus other business models that maybe there was some luck in it. But um, we're the ones that are doing the work. We're the ones that are sticking with it over the obstacles yeah. that come up. So I think in a lot of ways we make our own luck on that. But that that's just mm -hmm. my thought on it. <laughs> But. And there's a little bit of yeah, and we'll say we're fortunate, so we we well we'll do that. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, thank goodness that we can go to work, that we can do this, and we're in an isolated place, so we were lucky to do that. Yeah, yeah. I I know. Um, I talk to some musician friends. Um, every once in a while, like, well, this is going on, and they got nothing right now. Like, like they're all filing for unemployment, and they've been that way for mm -hmm. forever. So, like, I guess like my mom was calling me yesterday, and she was like, uh. Um, I just thought about this because she came across some article or something and like if you were still just a musician then I would be unemployed and I, I that's all I would be doing right now it's like like I, my whole life was playing in bars and like yeah. that's not happening so I mean uh, it's a completely different life I mean so you don't really think about those things but I mean in a lot of ways yeah we're we're fortunate but it's it's the, the path we we chose to live at that point right so I'm a big tipper right now an extra big tipper right now. So, so, uh, all right. So I, I really wanted to thank you. Uh, obviously I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know it's been a while here today. Um, but, uh, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your, your, your expert insight and your story. Um, so it was great. So great talking to you. And, uh, obviously uh, we talked a little bit about easy key, but how can our listeners find out more about what you're doing and contact you? Um, well, if you want to email me, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Or you can find me on Facebook, Barbara Boshin. Um, or Barbara at comerchant.com. Um, and then also comerchant.com if you want to learn more about relisting on Walmart or you want to learn more about EasyKey. Um, but, um, and I also have a group called Amazon Custom and Exclusive. If anybody's interested in joining that, we talk about different ways to do things. Um, so I'm always thinking about like how, um, like I said, I like to do clever things, word problem challenges. Like how can we, Amazon came out with this new program. What does that mean? Like, how does it, how do, this is what Amazon's saying it should be, but what is it really like? And how can we leverage that into our business and those kind of things? So. Awesome. Yeah. And I know I'm a part of that, that Facebook group as well. And there's a lot of amazing people that are in it. Like, uh, um, I, I, I know I, I seem to check it every day just because there's always something <laughs> really, really cool coming up. Um, so, so check it out definitely. And, and we'll have links to everything as well. So everyone here can check it out and thank you again, Barbara. It was, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And, uh, uh, so, so for everyone out there, um, I'll talk to you guys next time. And all right. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. bye.